Uh, Russell and Jonathan. He uh, strapped his hound to a car. That's what he did. He, he did what? Strapped he, his, his it's dog. a beautiful phrase. Hound. Yeah. Yes, it's nice, isn't it? He, he, um, he Dogging, attached... No, he, no, no. He attached his dog to the roof of his car for a ten-hour car journey. And so I was slightly mesmerised when you did that. We got the full gun oh, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> it was, it was and, he said, and he said, his excuse. <laughs> it's all in now, that oh. His excuse was. You can't be. You can't what? wear that T-shirt. Give us a slight glimpse at the, what the gun show looks like, <laughs> and never let us get a full. Get us get a full let's glimpse. Just get it out the way. Do just it. Show everyone oh, what they want to see, and then right, we can move do on. It. Come on, let's see. Let's see the white arm get, first. Who wants it? What's going to happen? No, 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 no. Because no, no, I'll tell you what's happening now, right? So this is happening now on telly, but I'm imagining myself at home with my family, with my dad sat there going, fucking don't. <laughs> <laughs> and my mum, go on, do it, do it for the girls. <laughs> and my granddad just go and kill me. So I'm, <laughs> I'm okay. going to do it. You'll notice, we, we, we didn't participate in what was... That was bullying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's call it out. I'm not going to look at them. It was bullying. <laughs> OK? I don't see how it's bullying to say, can we have a look at your impressive biceps, please? <laughs> you know what you did. <laughs> I am very anti-bullying. I bought one of those anti-bullying charity wristbands. <laughs> Instantly. I let someone down in school over a similar incident when I was eight, and I'm fucked if I'm letting this happen. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, Rich. <laughs> huh? no, no. <laughs> because okay. he didn't want to see him. A consensual gun show. A consensual gun show. The final of BBC's Bodyguard was watched by 17 million people. Due to a misunderstanding over language, some American viewers thought the two leads had an inappropriate relationship. Why? Does Home Secretary mean mother in American? <laughs> you are so, so close to the right answer there. Ah. Let's just put incest. <laughs> OK, next I wanted to know why some American viewers were confused about the relationship between two lead characters in The Bodyguard. OK, what have you gone for, Michelle? Uh, incest. <laughs> Dating. Yeah. We said related. They well, were that related. Is, that is the same deal. And you've gone with? We've put Baby Shark, but I said incest. <laughs> That's the strangest sentence I've said. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so, yes, some Americans were confused because when he says ma'am, a lot of Americans thought he meant mum. Uh, uh. So have a look at some of the tweets. Uh, the whole time I've been thinking David Budd in The Bodyguard has been saying mum, but it's ma'am. <laughs> Thank God. Really made me think I was watching a show with a ton of incest in it. <laughs> Incest's fine, it's just a ton of incest yes. that's yeah. bad. It's when, it's when the incest becomes too heavy. Yeah. Yeah. He did all his chores. Would <laughs> <laughs> have been a great strap line, wouldn't it? <laughs> He's really done all his chores. Yeah. One, One final chore, chore left to do. He, he, <laughs> <laughs> If he does it well, we're all going on a blatant picnic. <laughs> <laughs> also, there's far too much kind of friendliness between them for a standard English mother-son relationship. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, I would say if they were a mother and son, it yes. starts that you'd say their relationship is too formal. It's not a healthy yes. one. And then it becomes affectionate, but in the wrong way. <laughs> Without an intervening period of a yeah. sort of healthy family dynamic. Yes. Yeah, sometimes you overcorrect and then you swing back. Yeah, they definitely yeah. overcorrect, don't they? That was, yeah. <laughs> last night I overcorrected your mum. Yeah. Well, I overcorrected your mum last night, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> I overcorrected her in the car park behind the bins. <laughs> to ask the final question in this round, uh, here's pop <laughs> sensation <laughs> Katy Perry. Hi, Jimmy. I'm currently in the UK promoting my record, One of the Boys. But what event would have likely messed up all my plans if I had been here in March? Katy Perry, then. What? What? I was so... I was focusing on the beret. <laughs> yes, you, you're very bad at looking at things and actually taking in information, aren't you? I yes. can't watch can I just and say? hear. <laughs> so can I just say? <laughs> <laughs> you're supposed to tell people what I whispered to you. <laughs> That's why he's whispered. <laughs> well, sorry. What did he say, James? This what did he say? This is why it's like being on a team with Sean. Either crying, laughing, talking about insulting kids. <laughs> that comes up. I went, what do you think? You went, she's got amazing tits. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing I know. <laughs> Isn't she the girl who sung I Kissed a Girl? Oh, I liked yeah. it. And I liked I think it. that would be a hit if it was exactly the same music, but the lyrics were, I snogged a bloke and I loved it. <laughs> I sucked a cock and I liked it. <laughs>
you realise we're just going to edit that bit and use it as a trail? <laughs> Um, famous films often have different titles when released in non-English speaking countries So I'm going to give you four translated titles. I just want you to tell me what the original films were called. There's a point for each Okay, so I need the original title of Mum, I missed the plane. It's the first one The teeth of the sea. It's the second one electronic murderer <laughs> And father bastard Bastard. That's just a book I think of my dad. I think. <laughs> Mum, I missed the plane, the teeth of the sea, electronic murderer, and father bastard. I got snacks, nasty, don't worry. <laughs> I'm too late. No. Let's not answer that. <laughs> Gonna have the fourth one. <laughs> what was the fourth one, darling? Shh. Yeah. Oh, is Big Nasty, Big Nasty Sleeping? No, it's not. He's just fabulous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> OK, ready for some answers? I gave you four translated movie titles. What mm. were the originals? OK, so the first oh, one was Mum, I Missed the Plane. Home Alone. It was, of course, it was Home Alone. You didn't buy anything. Oh, Ooh, back in the game. OK, so no point, point, point. Oh, no. uh, the next one, that was the French title for Home Alone. The Teeth of the Sea, you all got this, right? Jaws. Jaws. The French title for Jaws, of course. <laughs> Electronic Murderer. Sarah Connor, come with me if you want to live. It's a chopper. I'm not Sarah Connor. Um, <laughs> um, Terminator. Terminator. So Terminator, um, Terminator, of course. I'm and you put, you put Joe? Robocop. Oh. He's not a murderer. He's law enforcement. Yeah, well. <laughs> Justifiable <laughs> homicide. Well, that's <laughs> a good point. OK. Um, <laughs> Father Bastard. I put Daddy Dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> I panicked, and I thought that might be a film. That is a film you should write. Mm -hmm. uh, what did you get, Catherine, Big Nasty? Bad Santa. OK, and, and uh, David, Frank? I thought it was um, the Father Brown, the uh, popular Kenneth Moore black-and-white movie based on the G.K. Chesterton story. <laughs> I wish it was that. I'll, uh, yeah, yeah, that's the right answer. Called, it, was, <laughs> it was called Father Brown, but... Um, what was it? It was Bad Santa, of course Yay! it was Bad Santa. <laughs> 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 so, uh, points on that, one, four, three. Whoa! Oh, so we're like back in the Everyone, OK, I asked you why Portofino was played <laughs> by hordes of paparazzi in June. The, the Wayne and Colleen got married. OK, Sean, James? Rooney really got married. OK, you've gone for? Rooney wedding. You're all absolutely right. Get in. They've all done well. Is that Portofino? It looks like a right shithole, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Look at Portofino. It just looks like a total dump. It looks like the Asda car park. That does look like an Asda car park. I don't know. Is that, the, is that their wedding day? Yeah. <laughs> they got married in a little chef in Portofino. <laughs> that's a terrible one. That's a dreadful... That is not even great. Do it again. All right. What do you want me to say? What you just said. I think I'd like to challenge myself with another sentence. This is it. Fucking Portofino. Shit. There's nothing here. There's a fucking railing in a truck. That's right. That's OK, yeah. You would make an excellent scout. You know what, um, you know the Liverpool footballers, they keep getting burgled um, yeah. by people in Liverpool. And there's like eight or nine of them now being burgled. And it's while they're playing. Yeah. I just love the fact that people are watching the telly going, hang on a minute, is this live? <laughs> <laughs> I've got an idea. It's not mad. Hear me out. <laughs> you watch. I'm going around Stevie G's house. <laughs> and then they burgle him until he gets substituted and then they run back. <laughs> Alan Sugar was hiring children. <laughs> You're not allowed to hire children. He wasn't no wonder right. the economy is fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you a question. If you, because like they're looking for the, the next wave of entrepreneurs and businessmen, but and you are both brilliant comedians. <laughs> but if you didn't do that, could you get a job? Do you think what would you do? I can't imagine you having a proper job, Michael. Have you ever had a job in the real world? Am I on the Jonathan Ross show? No, no. <laughs> No one's on the fucking Jonathan Ross show anymore. I've had jobs. I took raisins off the back of a lorry for fruit and fibre. What? You took raisins off the back of a lorry? Is that why they grow them? They're in boxes. <laughs> 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 what 
I work for a Milan. <laughs> Do you know what I would do if I wasn't what well, I do? I would like to marry people, like be a registrar. That's nice. I think they're bigamist yeah. or something. <laughs> <laughs> I did work in a bakery for one day. <laughs> but the boss went off and I, when he came out, I was lying down eating cakes. <laughs> Oh, the best thing about that is I know 100% absolutely true. <laughs> I asked you what the lyric uh, in Do They Know It's Christmas was changed to. Uh, did you get this? I thought it was, uh, thank God tonight it's just the flu. <laughs> Kevin, Sarah, did you know this? It's, it's a reaching out and touching some, like a reaching out and touching you, or a re That's a reaching out and touching your Ebola. That's... <laughs> it, is, it is reaching out and touching you. Well, tonight we're reaching out and touching you, which if someone's got Ebola is a terrible it's, idea. It's like literally the worst thing you can do. Yeah. It's literally the worst thing you can do. But, I mean, they're recommending it in a song, so fuck it, let's do it. <laughs> reaching out and touching your Ebola. That's my answer. Tonight. It was more, the song was more about raising money than to be a sort of treating Ebola mnemonic. <laughs> But like... still, they could have said reaching out and, like, touching, like, near you. Yeah. <laughs> reaching out and yeah. sort of... Tonight we're raising money. I don't know what that is. Yeah, What's we're that? We're raising money, but <laughs> physically <laughs> distancing ourselves from you, because, for fuck's sake, you've got Ebola. <laughs> it's not as catchy what you just said, though, is it? It's not as... I, I not as tell you what's catchy, Ebola. <laughs> What, what did you put? I've got a brand new combine harvester. <laughs> <laughs> so, so can I just? So you thought the lyric? You thought the lyric? Uh, <laughs> well, tonight, thank God, it's them instead of you. Was changed to. I've got a brand new combine harvester. <laughs> You're <a> plagiarist. <laughs> That really feels like they're rubbing it in. It's absolutely fine. You're so sensitive about these issues of taste and decency, Jimmy. It's absolutely fine. If it was about a famine campaign, yes, it would be insensitive to mention a combine harvester. Yeah. When it's a disease, it's fine. <laughs> it's just chit-chat. <laughs> I thought genuinely the lyric they replaced, thank God it's them uh, and that, instead of you, I thought was the most honest lyric in the whole song, because that's exactly what everyone in the West thinks about the, the fucked parts of the world, global issues, we think, <laughs> thank God the global issues tend to happen abroad. Around, just to rack up the tension on the big fat quiz of the 90s, uh, I'm going to tell you, we've got a gunge tank for the losers. <laughs> we've got the actual Knowles House Party gunge tank. No well, can, we, can we just lower the tension a bit by saying, go fuck yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Richard looks thrilled. You look... Super excited about this. <laughs> We've got a gunge tank and you're behind, so buck up your ideas. I will kill you in your sleep. Who is weird? That is the original gunge tank from Noel Sound. What do you think? <laughs> and that's Jet as well. <laughs> Who is weird, if I may? I'd Go like on. to speak on behalf of my fellow panellists, the losers, let's face it, OK? Yeah. You were not consulted about the possibility of a gunge tank, were you? I still don't believe in it, Jonathan. It's right there. <laughs> it's a gunge oh, tank. Right. There is one person here who clearly did know about the gunge tank. Of course yeah. I knew about the gunge tank. I booked the gunge tank. Here. Himself. So I would turn now to the audience and ask as to whether you think the two harmless and charming... Well, no, they, they lost the quiz. The They're going in the gunge tank. Go the... Or about should Jimmy Carr go in the gunge tank, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. Yeah. You should, Jimmy. You should, Jimmy. You should. Yeah, Jimmy. Lose the quiz. You lost the you quiz, should, Jimmy. Yeah. Jimmy Carr, I speak on behalf of the nation when I say you've taken so much, it's time to give back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy because they keep... I can't see what the big deal is, Richard. I can't see why. A big thank you to our amazing panel, all our panellists, and thank you for watching. This has been the Big Fat Quiz of the 90s. Good night. <laughs>